All right. Yo, what's up, what's up? Yo, what up? It's your boy, Brandon J. Welcome back to the podcast, dog. It's been a minute, man. Yeah, it's been a long minute. <laughs> oh, yeah, but what, I'm, I'm proud to welcome y'all back to the podcast, man. We got a lot of new stuff to talk about because we've been gone for a minute. But today, we locked in and we're trying to get back on the grizzly. But uh, it's hard trying to do everything we're trying to do. But there's no excuse. If we want our YouTube channel to grow, we want it to grow. Ain't that right, Miss J? That's right. You got to put it in the work. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, man, so today... Uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you so silly. Well, so what are we doing? You want me to just keep going with Yeah, just keep okay, going with so, Lock it in for me. Like you said, we've been gone for a minute. Got a lot of stuff that we've been working on. We've been working on getting everything that we've been needing for the podcast, for YouTube, for... All our different social media stuff. I've been working on um, launching my brand. Um, it's going to be coming really, really soon. I've been doing a lot of design work, um, a lot of building, you know, helping out some other businesses and, you know, helping design their logos and get their brands and stuff together. So, been busy um, working on going full time with. Um, my business, um, which will be a more design company. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's what I got going on. But like he said, we got a whole lot of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, so <clears throat> let me hop into it and tell y'all what I've been up to, man. So What you been up to, Brad? If y'all okay. been following the podcast from when we first launched the podcast, y'all know that your boy was sick for three years. You know what I'm saying? Like I always tell everybody, hey, your resilience is in how you get back up. Because everybody going to fall, get knocked down, fall down, however you want to categorize it. But your resilience come in how you stand up, how you get back up. And I got knocked down. God sent me down for three years. I had a very bad illness. Now, if y'all following the podcast and y'all want to know, want me to talk about my illness, drop it, drop a comment down below and let us know. But uh, uh, coming back off the other podcast, if y'all watched it, you know what I'm saying? I was gone for a minute. And when we was trucking, man, we was rocking. And uh, like I say, I got sick and it's like starting all over again. So this... I really ain't going to say I took a year off because I've been grinding on my other channel, right? And on my other channel, like, I've been straight running it up. Hold on. <laughs> Did he just take a pause to put on some lotion? <laughs> Look at the white knuckles, bro. I got to. <laughs> I got to. Oh, man. So... <laughs> And, you know, y'all know we launched my brand, Brandon J. I got him. You know what I'm saying? So, in this podcast, I'm wearing my merch. And uh, in this podcast, Miss J, she's wearing her merch. And uh, I got on one of my hoodies today. <laughs> yeah. And show, show them your little, uh, your little, your little specialty Yo. thing. Your little, your little signature. So, we got... You know, my little signature there. But, you know, it's just one of my everyday hoodies that I got on today. But I got quite a few different things coming out um, with the hoodies for the women, for the men, um, some stuff for the kids, working on some hats. And so got my whole little lineup. Um, but I also do other stuff as well. I do a lot of stuff with, like... Um, Doing the decals and stuff for cars, um, for different businesses, whether it's cars, 18 wheelers, yeah, you know, we in the trucking as well, right, so right. And that's you know, a big do one. a that's lot a of different one. decal work and stuff like that. Um, 
and I also do like a lot of different um, home decor type stuff. Like I got a lot of custom rugs and stuff that I make for a lot of my different customers. So, you know, like I said, I got a lot of different stuff that's going on, but working on trying to go full time doing plug merch. Go to <laughs> w, go to uh, project eight eleven dot com. Spell it out. Project eight eleven dot com. You can put in your custom orders there. Um, right now we have a merch tab, but it's empty. We're working on getting that merch tab up. We really trying to lock in, man. I've been going hard for this past year. Um, I've been trying to push a lot of content on my other channel. So I just want y'all to know I have not been dormant and I don't want to, uh, channel drop on this channel. Cause this is my podcast, my personal channel. You know what I'm saying? My business channel where we get it in and go hard in the paint. With a lot of um, 18 wheeler content, a lot of car show content, truck show content, uh, drag racing content. You know what I'm saying? So if y'all, hey, if you know, you know. If you locked in with your boy Brandon J, <laughs> you know it's cracking over on the other channel. And I look, I appreciate all the support. But yes, anyway, yes, yes. let's get back into what I've been doing to get back trucking. So first of all, first things first, bro, I got better in the COVID. So I got sick pre-COVID. I got sick maybe six, maybe, yeah, probably about six or seven months before the COVID hit, you did. And I'm, I was just sick. I mean, I, I lost a tremendous amount of weight. Um, at my lowest, I think I was like 115 Maybe 110 pounds. Yeah, close to it. And if y'all know Brandon J, (laughs) I'm a fat boy. (laughs) Fat boy for life. Yeah, you know what's up wrong with Brandon J ain't trying to eat. (laughs) Right? So, by the grace of God, I got better. You know, I stayed positive during my journey. My two, three-year journey stayed positive. Would have never, ever, 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 Ever been able to make it without you, Miss J. Aww. And I want you to know from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you locking in, having my back. You know, but that's what we do. We had the world. And then um, what we thought was the world didn't mean anything when my health went when my health went south. Hey. So now that I'm back, stronger than ever, um, I think I'm, right now. Like, no cap, I'm past my recovery journey. I am recovered. Um, And along the way of me getting healthy, I was still struggling with a few health issues. And not saying that those health issues are 100% gone, gone, but I changed my diet. I stopped eating beef, period. Like, I eat zero beef. I'm talking about, th- man, dog, that beef had my motherfucking gut so banged up, bro. <laughs> like, dog, that's, part, I, that's a big part of the reason I'm sure I got sick. My pH balance and my antibodies and all that stuff was off because if your gut health ain't nothing or if your gut health ain't right, bruh, game over, period. And I, I really do believe 110%. My gut health health failed me, along with other um, problems, and it just it just spiraled out of control. But when I when I got better, I figured, all right, cool. So I'm back to eating, you know, my normal diet. And along the way, I said, you know, I'm a can this beef. I'm done with it. Stick a fork in it, Wody, because it's done with, <laughs> literally. So I done that, and once I made that happen, I'm telling you, I noticed a tremendous difference in my energy, in the way that my body processes foods. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got, like, super technical with it yet, though, fam. Like, so I don't know, like, when I'm burning carbs or when I'm burning uh, energy or whatever, whatever. I don't know all that. But I know cutting that beef out, bruh, made a world of freaking difference. 
And yeah, I know we got another truck coming to the channel. We didn't cash out on the truck. We've been working on it this past year. Um, we didn't fix a lot, a lot of things on it, but it still needs a lot of work. Like a lot of people be like, nah, bro, I fuck with it the way it is. <laughs> and like, I'm not knocking nobody, but in the trucking world, I know when you out trucking, if you pull in that weigh station, you pull in that weigh scale, you don't want to give them a reason to put you out of service outside of your control. No, you don't want to give them a reason to put you out of serve. Yeah, you don't want to give them a reason to put you out of service unless it's something 100% out of your control. Like you did your pre-trip, everything on the, you know, spe well, first of all, you got to do the pre-trip the right way. And if you do the pre-trip the right way, and then you go through the scale and they find something wrong, like you can't you can't beat yourself up. Because first of all, we doing pre-trips, and a lot of us, we are not mechanics. So when you're doing a pre-trip, you know, you looking for the obvious. Tires, leaks, cracks. It, you know, making sure your rubber ain't cracked, frayed, or broke or anything like that. You want to make sure you ain't got no major oil leaks. I don't even know. I don't think you can have... Can you? No, yeah, you can have oil leaks. You just can't have nothing major. You can't be spraying oil out the bottom of your engine while you're going down the highway. Um, You know, make sure all your tires good. Make sure your cooling level good. You know, just, you know, pre-trip shit. And uh, I didn't go over everything that's in the pre-trip, but if you're a truck driver, you know how to do a pre-trip. We don't have to go down that road. So with that being said, I mean, I fixed so much stuff on this truck. I was like, man, I'm ready to go, like anxious, right? But there again, you listen to the universe, the universe like, yeah, I got you this far. And we good. But at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, we have to keep pushing and stay positive. Because, like, when you, your bank account going from here to here to here to here to here to here to here. To here. You you have the tendency to lose sight of the positivity or that super locked in energy you had in the beginning. And uh you can't lose sight of that. Cause boy, this hey, this trucking game is hey, it's that bad side bitch. And she gonna take all your money and make sure your main squeeze no. Boy. That bitch thirsty. <laughs> thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. As long as she pay the bills. <laughs> All right. Hey, that's one thing she gonna do, Doc. As long as she pay the bills. <laughs> that's one thing she gonna do. I had to get some water, man. Getting over a little common cold or whatever. Got to keep my, my beautiful voice <laughs> hydrated. But, um, you know, so I don't know. I might insert some pictures of what I've been doing to the semi and what kind of semi it is. Because low-key, I've been keeping it under wraps. I I think I posted it on my page one time. I think I posted this new truck once. <laughs> yeah. I think I posted it just once. Oh, wow. I ain't posted. Well, I know we got a whole lot of footage of what we've been doing and what's been going on, but it's definitely been a journey. Man. It just ain't it ain't quite Brandon J status yet. <laughs> right, right, right. Hey, quick question. What's up? Is the back of that still blinking red? Yes, it is. I bet. All right, so now our next topic is uh 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let me talk about this. What? Uh, you know, so I'm a consumer of YouTube as well as a creator. And uh I follow this. I was watching a video from Florida Truck Riders, and he was made he made a very good point. Shout out to you too, big homie. Uh he's like, we need to band together, contact him. We need to get a page together. So we can get signatures, do whatever we got to do to be heard in our community as truckers, owner operators, and our company drivers, right? We all have a common goal, and that goal is to make money and take good care of our family. And if we can't take good care of our family because we have to stay gone 30 days out of 30 days, just to make ends meet because people broke. No, nah, fuck that. Brokers. Y'all know who y'all are. <laughs> I don't know if y'all being stingy or if y'all being greedy. Some would say it's probably two and the same. But you know what y'all doing. You know what y'all need to do to help us out. It's as truckers, not help us out. Me yeah. first, yeah. Not help do us what's right, <laughs> right. Not help us out, but like Miss J say, you gotta be first. You know, if if somebody, if you got a, if you got a line haul that you need to get from point A to point B, you put it on there for a cheap price. For example. You got a load that's going 500 miles, right? And you want to pay somebody $700 or $800 to go 500 miles or $1,000 to go 500 miles. How can somebody, like, by the time you're done putting fuel in your truck, getting there, idly trying to find you another load, or you might have been trying to find you a load before you left, but as scarce as loads, or you might have not been able to find that load before you leave. So you take you take the load to get you out, then you try to find a load coming back. And then you do find the load coming back. And keep in mind, you didn't went into an area that's not real hot. You know what I'm saying? What we mean by that is you go into an area. It ain't a whole lot of... Uh, it ain't a whole lot of good loads coming out of that area. So you got to keep all that in mind when you loading the truck or when you loading your own truck. Or if you a dispatcher and you loading somebody else's truck. You just got to keep all that shit in mind, man. You can't um, just let all that shit go by the wayside. Just like you want to eat, just like you want to pay your bill, Bills, just like you want to pay your car note, just like you want to make sure your kids and family got what they need, don't discount a trucker or a driver for wanting the same thing. And the reality of this is the hard truth. I don't give a fuck what nobody say, bro. The shipper, they're going to be okay. The trucker, is going to be okay. The broker is not needed. Let me say this one more time. The broker is not needed. You can say, hey, you it it wouldn't be nothing without the brokers because you guys are in the truck. You guys can't keep up with this, 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 that, and the other. Right? Yes, we can. We do not need a broker. Like Florida truck riders say, en enough of us get together and even tow piglet. If a bunch of us do, we can come up with a system to where the shipper puts the load on the system and you have to be a qualified broker, I mean a qualified uh, trucker on that system to carry the load. And the broker is supposed to be the person that handles handles the logistics side of it, meaning, hey, I got a shipper might say, hey, I got 
40 loads, right? Just per se. If the shippers say they got 40 loads, the broker, their argument is, well, how are you going to see the loads that the shipper has? Because you're a truck driver and the shipper's a shipper. We're going to see the load just, just like you do. We're going to create a platform for the trucker and the shipper to stay in contact and communicate. It's not, and it's not going to be a broker. And if you want to call it a broker, it's going to be auto, uh, artificial intelligence as a broker. Hell, it's probably going to be smarter than a lot of the freaking brokers, because <laughs> the broker send the the broker sends you a load with with misdirections on it. Have you have you forty fifty miles away from the correct drop, especially if it's like a new construction drop drop oh, something so like hurts. that, or um, like a you know or like a, a stuff store. in rural areas. Yeah. The bro the broker's gonna have you all over the place. So when you have a something inside the city limits, like a Walmart or your local grocery store, the broker can't fuck that up. Cause they ain't get on Google, Google Maps and find it just like we can. If Google Maps does its job, that makes it easy for the broker. Where the brokers drop the ball is. When Google Maps can't do when Google when it's not on Google Maps, then the the broker drops the ball at that point. When it's not on Google Maps, and they think that we're supposed to pay them to drop the ball because you put they put it in the GPS and they can't find it, so they give you the closest address that will populate as an address. Yeah, and that's a that's another way that you messing with my money because if you push right. me out Facts. fifty miles out the daggone way, that's fifty miles out the way of fuel that I just freaking wasted going the wrong daggone direction. And fuel five six dollars a gallon now, bro. Which what? means you miscalculated how much you was paying me in the first daggone place because you're paying me per mile. Right, and all the and man, y'all gotta stop accepting all this bullshit of detention. If you get somewhere and it take them longer than an hour or two hours to unload you, and then just say, yo, the your company, whoever you are entangled in the load with, they say, hey, we're going to give you $150 or $200. Now, that's cool if it's only an hour or two hours over your original Delivery time So for example If your delivery time Is at 1 o'clock uh, 1 o'clock p.m. Right? Mm-hmm And They don't get you unloaded Until 3 o'clock p.m. If your company Or the broker Whoever you're dealing with Want to give you $200 Worth of detention time For the overage That's cool, right? But if you Your appointment time At 1 o'clock and goddamn me, you don't get loaded to you goddamn me, you don't get unloaded to about 7 30, 8 o'clock. Bro, two hundred dollars in detention and two hundred and fifty dollars in detention ain't gonna do shit. Cause now that's that's eating up time on your clock. And not only is that eating up time on your clock, bro, you done had to sit there and idle or run your APU. Bro, that's money. That's fuel. Then you got to get up out of this place because nine times out of ten, it ain't no place for you to go within the daggone city limits to park, especially if you're in a major city limit. Nine times out of ten, you got to travel to get to a place for you to park overnight. And then not only that, a lot of these places, you have an appointment they don't want you time. Stay on your lots. Yeah, they don't want you sitting on their property. So they say your appointment time at one o'clock, you get there. So boom, I right, you go hand your paperwork, find who you need to find. God damn me, they don't want to unload you. And they say, oh, well, we'll call you when we ready. But your appointment time at 1 o'clock, but you can't park here. You got to leave. We'll call you when we ready to unload <laughs> But it ain't no place to go in your city limits. <laughs> like, where you think I'm supposed to go? <laughs> bro, like brokers, like y'all got to pay for that shit, bro. That shit ain't free. 
I don't give a fuck how you cut it. You can say, oh, that's part of your job description. That's this, that's that. Whatever, whatever the fuck you want to say, but that's time and time equals money. Time Ain't money nobody doing nothing for crap. free. Ain't nobody doing nothing for free. That's why, that's why, God damn me, y'all want to charge all, y'all want to take this fair broker fee at 30, 40%. You know what I'm saying? And then y'all, y'all, uh, y'all swing it to the drivers like it's only 10%. You know what I'm saying? Y'all take all y'all uh, administrative fees and company fees and all this. And now you have, now you have a, cal- a calculated number. That's the number that you show the transporter. And then you take 10% of that number. Y'all not taking 10%. Look, for starters, we, we know what well, I know me and Miss J know. Drivers, stop taking cheap freight. Let them sit on it. It'll be there. And, but and then it's like a happy medium. You got drivers out here that's in a three, four thousand dollar a month lease or lease purchase. Or, and I get it. I understand. Like, they gotta make money, but you can't. But at some point, you gotta force the broker's hands because you are cost you doing yourself a disservice in the long run by taking they cheap freight because right. they ain't gonna ever come up on the rates. And when it comes time for you to do maintenance, when it comes time that you need something, you ain't got enough money in your pocket. Yeah, you was able to pay the bill, but what else? Facts. These brokers, they taking their administrative fees, but what about your administrative fees? Because you still gotta run <laughs> your company. And that's what the brokers get over at. A, that's what the brokers get over at, bro. A minute, what administrative fees, man? Your <laughs> com, your company ain't no different than my company. Exactly. Just because just because we drive a truck, we still have administrative office. We still got our insurance. We got to pay. We still got our office we supplies. We still got to pay our. We wait a minute. We still got to do our annual renewals. We still got to pay our quarterly ifters. We got a whole lot of daggone bills that we got to pay that the child ain't got to pay. And it ain't even <laughs> bills. It's a whole lot of extra work that we got to do outside of this truck. That's right. That. So. We got to get the load from point A to point B, point C, et cetera, et cetera. And then we got to get out the truck or we can do it on a break or whatever. But now we got to bust out the laptop. We got to enter all this different data. We got to enter our miles in each state. We got we to gotta keep up with all this, all this stuff. Exactly. And y'all, y'all got to respect us as drivers because... The trucking industry can survive without a broker. You like you can't change my mind on that. And if any broker got anything to say, you know where to find me at, player. Come holler at me. Straight up. Let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> let's, hey, let's, let's talk, talk about, about it. <laughs> hey, look, we can do a Zoom call. We can, look, we can do whatever. Come on, we can we can do a podcast on it. Let's talk about it. Let's have yeah. a, let's have a conversation. Because all brokers ain't bad, just nice. like like all all brokers ain't bad, all truck drivers ain't bad. But you you got you you got your ones. Absolutely. At the end of the day, we all got bills to pay. We all trying to run businesses, which means we all trying to eat. So don't be greedy. Be fair. Facts. Now let's talk about this world of trouble. That the world is in. Man, there's so much craziness going on these days. Your boy Trump didn't announce he re he uh rerunning in uh 2024. Is that gonna be good for the economy or bad for the economy? We don't know. Who knows? So we need y'all to drop y'all comments down below and let us know if you think Trump can do a better job than Biden. Now, yeah. now keep in mind, we didn't had Trump in the office once. And I don't think it lied. Me personally, I don't think none of it just strictly lies in the hands of the presidents. I mean, facts. that's my personal big, opinion. Big, big facts. But I ain't big into the politics. Yeah, I know me. But, yep. Yeah. All right. So, we got to talk about it. What I don't we know. We got to talk about She said we ain't into politics. Maybe. I ain't in, well, I, look look I ain't, I ain't into politics we, either, but maybe I that's ain't something. Into politics. Maybe that's something we need to look into. Maybe maybe we part of the problem because maybe we don't vote right 
or we're not active enough. Maybe we part of the problem because we're not political. You know, but talking politics, you got to be careful, man, because that shit is sending you on an emotional roller coaster. Because, I mean, talking politics is as bad as somebody trying to hit on your spouse. Like, <laughs> bruh, like they going to drag you down up and through there if you don't agree with their uh, political p- political beliefs. Yeah, like, that's like, why I don't do politics. Friend, like, Everybody got opinions. Friendships, all that, that shit fall apart over politics, bro. Like, you would think these motherfuckers. <laughs> Was banging each other. It's just politics. Everybody got their own separate views on things. And I ain't here to judge nobody for why they vote whatever way they vote. I'm just saying, I understand that at the end of the day, it's not just one person making a decision. It's a whole team of folks making decisions. So, I mean, whether it's this person or that person, it don't matter. It's a whole team of people behind the scenes that's making decisions. Facts. So, anyway, we appreciate y'all tuning into the podcast. Let us know if you're voting for Trump 2024. Let's go.